so far, there have only been two possible outcomes for any species that ever existed on this planet. The vast majority of them, more than 99%, are already extinct. The tiny minority, less than 1%, are still around. In fact, some of them are absolutely thriving. And humans are the prime example. We seem to be the first species among many millions that embraced science and developed technology. We developed languages and scripts, which helped us to store our collective knowledge in books. We invented press and shared useful information across the planet. This helped us to build tools, buildings, wells, mines, roads, fortifications and ships. It also protected us from other species, such as dangerous bacteria and viruses, which we fought off through widespread use of sanitation, improved nutrition, food safety, antibiotics and vaccines. Dissemination of human collective knowledge led, through very different ways, to an explosion of human population, from only 250 million in the year 1000 to more than 7 billion in the year 2000. This is a nearly 30-fold increase over a period of a mere thousand years. When James Watt invented the steam engine near the end of the 18th century, the planet hardly harbored one billion humans at the time. That's seven times less than today. It's difficult to appreciate that every structure that existed on the planet up to that point was built through energy derived from a muscle, either human or animal muscle. It's all too easy to forget that in the year 1800, the world was a truly different place. Nearly half of the people lived in autocratic societies and another half in colonies. Only about one in 10 people could read while all the others were illiterate and a tiny minority ever completed secondary education. More than 90% of people lived in extreme poverty and 4 in 10 newly born children in the world would die before reaching their 5th birthday. That's how tough life has been for most humans at the time. Watt's discovery gave rise to machines and industrial revolution. We started to derive energy from fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas. More energy gradually created more wealth as measured in gross domestic product of nations, which in turn improved health of the population. Innovations by Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison gave us electricity and lit up the planet at night. Telegraph, telephone, radio and television soon followed, enabling efficient transfer of information to large populations. We designed and built large cities and moved into them. There, we educated ourselves and fulfilled our basic needs. We started living in lit up and heated flats and houses, in sanitary conditions with clean and safe water from pipes and sewage systems. We bought food from grocery stores and found paid jobs. We established the rule of law with police force ensuring public order and various forms of entertainment began to flourish, theater, music and sports. It's all been accelerating ever since, with globalization, mass migration into cities, tourism and economic migration, air travel, satellites and space exploration, mobile telephones, personal computers, internet, online shopping and delivery, computer games, and even virtual reality. But is all that enough to allow us to survive as a species for a very long time rather than getting extinct nevertheless. Based on the fate of some 10 other species of humans who are all extinct now, we could predict that will probably follow the same unfortunate fate. But to counter that argument, the progress of science and technology that we're all supporting is making us a unique case that hasn't ever been seen on this planet. This certainly makes our fate less predictable and give us all at least some hope. It is likely that our future will be unimaginable to us who live today, like our present would have been unimaginable to those who lived thousands of years ago. But it doesn't mean that we broke free from some obvious constraints and threats that still very much apply. 
The first important constraint to consider is the number of humans that the planet could support in the long run. Human population keeps growing very fast, but for how long? With wealth and economic prosperity gradually spreading, people choose to have fewer children. Under this scenario, we'd reach our peak at about 10 billion and then start a slow decline. It is not a problem to place 10 billion of us on the surface of the planet. The problem is that each day all 10 billion require new food, new water and generate new waste. The Earth is large, but not infinite. So we're bound to eventually exhaust all food, water and cover the planet with waste unless we find sustainable solutions. If we manage to stabilize at about 10 billion and then find a way to make our food and water usage and waste management sustainable, this would lead to an optimized environment in which we'd all reach the limits to our biological age. But we would still need energy to support this state and fossil fuel reserves aren't endless either. Besides, Energy based on fossil fuels seems to have led to massive carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere, which may cause climate change and put us all in danger. Let us assume that we'll manage to solve this problem through transfer to clean and renewable sources such as wind and solar energy. Perhaps even fusion reactors may begin to work. These are all large assumptions, but let us assume that, after solving our demographic problem, our food and water sustainability problem, our waste management problem, we also managed to solve our energy problem. What would happen then? This brief period of optimization and balance could soon be followed by genetic modification of humans. We'll all be remembered as the original Homo sapiens because we are likely to see many genetic modifications. We may start living much longer when we break the barriers imposed by aging, replace our organs with new ones, improve our immune systems and treat all our diseases with the wonders of personalized medicine. But all this progress in medicine would renew the problem of overpopulation. The world would become full of very, very old people who may not look that old. How many of them can the planet realistically support? Let us assume that we would manage to stabilize the population through some political measure. China introduced its one-child policy more than three decades ago, showing that political solutions to overpopulation are possible in principle. In a stabilized and optimized world, instability would still be found in a political division into countries, because this has always spurred arms race, which wasted an enormous amount of global wealth on weapons production. It gave us the opportunity to destroy our only planet relatively easily. Nuclear disaster is our greatest and most realistic threat. Demilitarizing the world and starting to cooperate as a single species may seem as a distant goal today, but perhaps some future, better educated generations will consider it more seriously. This would allow us to turn our collective attention to other threats. Each time they occurred, Pandemics of deadly viruses and bacteria showed us that we're all a single species and that political borders don't matter to microbes. Luckily, we're getting increasingly good at understanding and controlling pandemics and developing effective measures to prevent and treat them, although we're not quite there yet and still have a lot to learn. What else could endanger us? Our lives depend on a certain temperature range. Inside of the Earth is far too hot and outer space is far too cold. A massive climate change caused by supervolcanoes or burning of fossil fuels could certainly become a threat. We just don't know how large or how quickly would it develop. An entirely new threat is increasingly being recognized by some of the leading scientific minds. The development of artificial intelligence. If machines that we produce develop consciousness and find a way to turn against us all, we'd have very little chance in such a war because machines would soon outperform humans in just about everything. The same would likely happen if hostile aliens from outer space invaded our planet.
if they find us before we find them, we'd probably have as much chance to defend as Native Americans and Australians had against colonizers of their continents from Europe, or perhaps much less. So, we can only hope that aliens from outer space wouldn't be hostile to us. This leaves us with the ultimate threat, which is our occupation of only a single planet. Unfortunately, sooner or later, we will find ourselves on a collision course with a large enough object from outer space. Before that happens, we'll really need to find a way to leave the Earth and colonize the Moon and Mars. Life will be immensely difficult to support there, with no food, no water, no oxygen, no atmosphere that could protect us from rocks flying through space, no magnetic fields to protect us from irradiation, and absolutely freezing temperatures. How can we possibly sustain large human populations there? We may need to start genetically modifying ourselves to adjust to such conditions, but that may not be enough. Perhaps we'll eventually need to merge with machines rather than fight them, and become cyborgs, androids, humanoid robots. We may find a way to merge our DNA, conscience and memory with machines and to live in space in that state for a very long time, perhaps even flipping back and forth between a humanoid and a machine form. We are all in a race between our increasing ability to survive and the forces constraining our survival. It is impossible at this point to say what will prevail. Can we really use resources from the crust of this tiny planet to launch mass migrations into space and colonize the entire galaxy? That really doesn't seem very likely. At this point, the number of scenarios where we fail is far greater than those in which we succeed. It will take something truly extraordinary to keep us around for tens of thousands, let alone millions of years. But we're clearly a highly unusual species in comparison to all others that ever lived on the Earth. So if we got this far and started doing so many incredible things, we shouldn't give up. As long as so many of us are alive, everything may still be possible. Let's keep working together and hope for the best.